I could not wait. I could not wait to start this show. We had so much great conversation about to evolve uh, before the show starts. The best part about the show is before the show, well, quite frankly, Stockners and Mark Lovers <laughs> love you, but the best part before the show is before the, is before the show, not when I'm talking with you, but I'm just, I stopped all conversation. You wouldn't let us talk. You I shut it down. I, I ceased it because we were roaming. Kind of rude. We were roaming in great territory. I, I will tell you, Stockners, I said on Wednesday, I pounded the table and I said, Tesla to 1,000. I was wrong. And so what I want to do is... <laughs> Just a bit outside. I want, that happens. I want to cover um, how I was wrong, why I was wrong, and how you can benefit from that knowledge. We're going to get and to that. And why I think are the two most dangerous words in our industry. Right? Yeah. But we're going to get to that. <laughs> Let's cover first. Yes. Let's cover first Danny's shirt. Oh, baby. Stand hey. up. Look, I was wondering. Well, okay, look. I, I like Listen, this shirt. I do too. Yeah. we're going to. This is the part of the segment where we rate... Uh, Zach, Danny on a runway, please. Right. At the, um, what is the Anna Wintour thing where they do the, the Met Gala? Danny at the Met Gala. That was please. recent. Yeah, it was just this week. That's so, right. So uh, for the show tile, Danny at the Met Gala, figure it out. Um, <laughs> just just one part of it because we're going to get Perfect. to it. This is, is my kind of Hawaii. This, well, is, my, I, this is my Floridian shirt. It's a good shirt. I like yeah, it. I'm I, going I like to see it. Don in a couple of weeks. And in honor of Don, me going to Florida, whoa, whoa. I'm wearing this Floridian this is, shirt. That, you just said shirt. it was a Hawaiian shirt, but well, now I, it's a I, I was on the wrong shirt. coast. Tropical I was on the wrong, wrong ocean. Wrong yeah. ocean. <laughs> More importantly, I, my, I like the shirt. I, when you walked into the office, see the soccer nerds, you, you have to understand, I literally come into the office, put my head down. I do my work. I don't want to talk to Danny, not because I don't like him, because I don't want any show content to spill out. That's that's what he says. Oh gosh. Oh, you are you replaying that already? Oops, didn't mean that's all right. Sorry, Danny, stand up one more time. That was dual Tim. (laughs) Dual Tim. We can't have enough Tim. That I think I don't know if you're supposed to tuck that shirt in. Uh, I looked at it both ways, and I I I elected to tuck it in. You did. (laughs) Yes. Okay, that's that because it had tails. It wasn't straight across. Most of the the shirts it has tails. Oh yeah, it has yeah. tails. Well, like, it's like not, a tuxedo. It, no, no. I mean, it's it's not straight across. It's yeah. like a regular button down. Right. Shirt. Wouldn't, right, look, right, wouldn't right. look goofy or unbuttoned. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I I don't know. If I wouldn't any, have thought of that either. Un-tuned. I don't know if any Hawaiian wears their shirts. T- I, maybe I'm it's wrong. not Hawaiian. Uh, it's Floridian. We've established that. Is it? Well, it's Floridian. Yes. Yes. Do you? Are you wearing socks with sandals? Uh, uh, <laughs> the retirement community. So then, me. yeah. <laughs> so then, Zach walks in. But I am. Uh, but speaking of socks, I am bringing Don's kiss socks down to him. Boy, glad we got that update out of the oh, kiss socks. Um, yeah, so yeah. then, uh, Zach walks in, and he says something like, "Oh man!" And he said it. Do you remember the television show Dora the Explorer? Uh, yes. Yep. Unfortunately, so Remy, unfortunately, I do, and now you're going through it. Remy, well, no, it, uh, yeah, a little bit, because Remy, Remy just found it, like, and yeah. it's old, though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's only, it's weird. We're watching season one, and what used to be, that was 2000 when Dora was right, made, right. and the, the fox in the show, I'm not 100% sure uh, what the fox, like, his, name is, or his name is Swiper. Swiper, Swiper, Swiper that's right. Swiper. And he goes, Swiper, no, and like, to defend off this fox. Swiper, no swiping. Swiper, no swiping. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is the Swiper market, man. It's just taking everybody's money. <laughs> and, and, and it all triggered because that Kind of like inflation. And his, his, right. his all like, oh, like when, when they oh, say man. Swiper, no swipey, and, and, he goes, oh, man. And, and just like that. And Zach had like the perfect pitch, perfect intonation, which means Landed I'm pretty it. sure Zach was raised on Dora. And Never so, once. But then I got the thought, God, could you imagine? Like, so then Zach and I are talking. And I said, I think Dora went on strike. Like, Dora had a contract. Like, I'm not making this up. The voice of Dora the Explorer had some kind of contract issue where she felt, she felt used. I, I'm not. Felt slighted. Something. I'm not, listen, very bad story going here, but it's the swiper market, and I'm only doing this because uh, I want to make sure that we get swiper on the show tile. Mm. Uh, at the, <laughs> yeah, mission, <laughs> mission accomplished. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but then it got me thinking, who, like, the voice of Dora became known there for a while because she was in this contract negotiation. Mm-hmm. Who's the voice of swiper? Like, could you imagine going through life going, hey, does what? that keep you up at night? It does yes. now. <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. It sure and so does. I looked at Zach go, I've never ever had that thought. Well, no. now you have. <laughs> and so uh, I looked at Zach going, we're solving this mystery, Scooby Doo, right now. So then I type in, who was the voice of Swiper? It was one of those moments. 
So he, he gasped. I gasped, studio. and I'm like, we're not talking anymore, Zach. I've got to bring it up. <laughs> so the voice of Swiper in the live action movie was Benicio Del Toro. Oh, wow. Right? From Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? Yes! Yeah, yeah. And yes! Sicario? Oh, my gosh. They can't, They did big casting. Now, wow. I will tell you that I think the real Swiper, like from the TV show, uh, let me see here. Swiper, no swipey. Mark Wiener. Mark Wiener. Mark Wiener. Maybe it's Weiner, but I'm going to go with Wiener. Yeah. Mark. Unfortunate for his childhood. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Benicio Del Toro, voice of Swiper? Who saw that coming? Not me. No. 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 Swiper market. I'm telling you, dude. This market is absolutely nauseating. Swipe, swiping people. We, oh, we have hit left and right. the nauseating point of the market. Let me, let me, let's start out this segment how Tim was wrong. So I released what I thought was the most brilliant video I'd ever done because I finally figured out a way to explain the market action. I th- and I got comments on this. Here, here is here is where Tim went. rally. Tesla's road to a thousand. How much higher for stocks? Oh my gosh, Swiper got me again, and it's because I didn't say the magic phrase. Swiper, no swipe. I clearly don't know how the stock market works. So Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so, it. So I explain I so in my head I'm like, how can I explain this ridiculous, ridiculous Danny with the key phrases on ridiculous uh market? Like I'm looking let's show SPY here on a five minute chart, okay? And Wednesday, J Powell comes out and he says, No 75s, my friends. We're only going to do a basket full of 50s. And so the market on a five, look at this spy chart. It is rip roar and fun. It's like, we want to go higher and we're going to punish anybody who's ever had the thought of being short the market. You are going to get your butt handed to you. Oh, and they did. And look at this. Look at this. It's the swiper comes out and it's the fox steals the market from the bears, takes their honey, right? Mm-hmm. And so. Now and everybody's full of FOMO. Everybody's worried about missing out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm with you. But it, I finally figured out how to talk to the stock nerds and market lovers in a way that, like, not, it's not just, well, Jay Powell said this. Well, well, it's not that Jay, yes, Jay Powell lit the fuse mm-hmm. and he said this basket of 50s, no 75s. But markets move because they have to, not. Because they want to. And I've seen this before. But I've never been able to. You've never heard me say that before. Because I've never been able to articulate it before. Like, it, it, like I think that you should always be in a mood. Or a mode. A mode of constant growth. And I'm always striving to understand markets a little bit better. Every day just trying to get one. Like one tenth of one percent less worse. That's all I'm trying to do. A tenth of one percent less worse. Yes, that's all I'm trying singles, to do. Set that bar low. Not, singles and doubles, that's not right. home runs. Can't just, be disappointed. Just trying to get to the parking lot of the stadium. That's <laughs> so all I'm trying to do, folks. And so I say, markets, and I figured it out in my brain. Markets move because they have to, not because they want to. And then I, I break it down. And the most epic video I've ever created, I break it down that there are so many people that. Uh, they're, let's not even say they were short the market because they're bears. Let's just say that they have large institutional positions on and they hedged. Mm-hmm. And so when they see a binary event and the news is released and Jay Powell says no to 75s, they're like, I don't need these hedges. And the nature of taking off puts or closing out your short positions, your hedges, just that in itself. You're buying long. Doug You're buying it. long. Yeah. And so it, That's it, a short squeeze. Yes. And so it ignites the market. It goes in fuego. And so, see how I work that in there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fire for all our non-Spanish speakers. Mm-hmm. Fire! And so. Is that what Swiper uses, fuego? No, no. You just, <laughs> it, you, to get Swiper to calm down, you don't have to set them on fire. You just say swiper, no swiper. No, I'm saying does he use that terminology because they do. They go back and forth when English. He, does, he does use a little Spanish, I think. Yeah, they I've do. never heard swiper say in fuego. Oh, I mean, I oh Dora speaks in Spanish. Sometimes. She does. Yes, you haven't watched very long, have you? 
I, um, not, <laughs> you're just not, a rookie. You're just a novice in this. <laughs> they need the in-house Dora expert. Oh my! Hey, I Get am not bragging. Yeah. I am not bragging. Can but we, I lived through three kids watching that. Can we please put <laughs> Boots the monkey on Danny's shoulder? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Golly. Maybe Don looking at Boots the monkey. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Something. Let's see. Oh my God! I just, I'm just, just thankful first. they got through Teletubbies in one seat one year and that it was done. I'm yeah. so glad. I, 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 <laughs> I've not done the Teletubbies. Oh my um, gosh! Just mindless Teletubbies. Give me a go. Uh, it's, that's hard to watch. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Bluey is still. You know what? Could we get Bluey looking confusingly at Dora and the monkey, going, "What is this? It's going to be okay, quite the okay, thumbnail okay. this week." He's only <laughs> got a, a little while to be able to do this. Yeah, the show title's a, only so he's big. He's got a stock <laughs> chart somewhere on there. <laughs> You're not talking to Leonardo da Vinci over there. Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Hey, whoa! Whoa! whoa that's that. He's got yeah. a small canvas. It's not a big. It's a little small tile, dude. And, I, and I've got the power of tracks. the internet behind me. I can by, put anything on there. Bye. Just let me let me tell you that I am. Prozac. Yeah. I am always Prozac All in right. your biggest defense. Y'all are sweet. So so the market moves because it has to, not because it wants to. But if you listened to the end of the video, if you listened all the way to the very end, I said it hinges on one thing. And because I'm a graduate student, like with honors, of the Connecticut School of Broadcasting upstairs, I say it's called the teaser, Danny. I saved it till the end of the video. Not everybody watches till the end of the video. Okay? Okay. Now keep the phrase in mind. Markets move because they have to, not because they want to. And I've seen this pattern before where you short squeeze into the close and you at least get 45 minutes to an hour of continual up move in the future. Yeah. yeah. And well, just short covering, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, as people close right. out their shorts and. And then you can, then the and market. Once they close out their shorts, they don't need to hedge anymore. And if there's not right. any buying behind it. Right. So markets move because they have to, because, because they have to, not because they want to. And I said, but it hinges on what this next thing does. The dollar. And so I've got this on a five minute chart. And let me just show you, this is so gross. I mean, this is the most gross representation I've ever seen of this relationship meaning it's so in your face. Mm-hmm. And look at this. The dollar is just middling, 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 and then it collapses. And it, and someone might say they're looking over here at price like Tim, 103 to 102. Is that really collapse? Dude, that is, that is, that's that is like move. winning four Super Bowls in a row for the dollar. Yeah, that's a big uh, move. Or, or losing. It's the Bills. Losing four Super Bowls in a row. They lose it's, four, the, it's the Bills. It's the Bills. <laughs> And so that, that dollar collapse for that brief moment in time puts, re, it relieves the pressure on stocks, and they just rocket higher. Some would say, well, Tim, isn't that all facet of what Jay Powell said? Jay Powell with the fuse, right? The dollar then decide, the dollar then collapses, and then markets ignite. But then look at what, so what happened overnight, which you might not be aware of, is uh, England raised rates for the fourth time in a row. They're on their, we're, we're on rate raise mm-hmm. dose. Mm-hmm. Quarter now and a half. Mm-hmm. They're on rate raise cuatro, mm-hmm. keeping with the Dora theme. And so that's four. For, our, for the people who don't speak Spanish, cuatro is four. I love that. Like, Spoken in his best gringo yeah, voice. You keep the Dora theme running Quattro. and then immediately translate for everybody. Cuatro. Uh, qu- hola. Que tal? Hablo yeah. espanol. Yeah. Me as Tim. Fuego. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a soda from Coca-Cola? I think so. I think so, yeah. too. <laughs> now, look here. Look, for someone out there upset that you're joking around, Tim, it's been a bad week in the, the market. It, it's been a tough week in the market. I get it. Look, we have to. We have to approach this with a little bit of it. brevity, brevity, or not brevity, uh, levity, levity, yeah. because we, I can do this whole serious show, but it's not fun, mm-hmm. right? Let Don handle all the seriousness this week. So, well, if you've been following this religiously, you'd also have a huge cast position and you wouldn't mm-hmm. there you go too. take it on the chin. So yeah, well, there, we can, we're going to get to that yeah. or that is in the show notes. Trying to help you move along. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> So now look at what the dollar does. So England raises for the fourth time, and it the dollar just rockets up. And it doesn't matter what happened the day before. 
because the euro, uh, the pound, and the dollar, they're all intermingled, the dollar just races higher. And the markets can't even catch their breath. The markets had this huge, they, 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 can't even, they can't even whisper a little bit higher. They're just, they're sunk from the beginning. So the dollar peaks at one, almost at 104. And, and, and the markets, you know what they did yesterday, obviously, down. Well, yeah, yes, and, and you know what? And that's why you follow the charts, because it really doesn't matter what the reason is. Yeah. I, I hear you, what you're yeah. saying, and that absolutely could be tr- true. I'll give you another scenario that's just as likely. Okay. He says, okay, we're going to raise a half a point right now, but the quarter point, the three quarter point raise next time that everybody was expecting, that's off the table. Don't worry about it. So, whew, you get a relief rally because the dollar goes, ooh, he's not going to defend the dollar as much. Dollar has that little flash crash right. or whatever you want to call it. It goes down, markets go up, and then people, and the algos take over, like you said, yeah. short term. But then overnight, people have time to reflect and go, Wow, he's actually being less aggressive on inflation. What does he see that we don't? Is the economy slowing more than they thought? Because he was just beating the rising rate drums for months, and now all of a sudden he's softening again. Uh, he's, yeah, I, can, I mean, he's still hawkish, but he's less hawkish. Oh, crap. And so now the dollar's starting to strengthen because in a weak economy, treasury bonds and, and, and dollar do well. I, you know what? And, for, I, I, the and it po- doesn't matter. It's it just, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think this was purely mechanical. Yeah. And yes, because yesterday wasn't a wipeout. Like, let's, I want to I put that on the table, too. Yesterday, down, you're like, Tim, down 5%. How is that not a wipeout? That was a walk down. That was a systematic, mechanical walk down of equity prices. That wasn't uh, a limit down. Do you remember well, a March well, of 2020? Okay, folks, what he's saying is it, 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 can, it was a quote. I got to use my words carefully. It was an orderly market where the market sold off continuously yes. throughout the day. It didn't just go from negative 300 down to 1,000 in two minutes, which happens sometimes. Right. That's, that's, that's the whoosh. Yeah, yeah. The whoosh is what, the whoosh is what we want. Like if you're, if you're uh, waiting for your, your pitch, you're a bull, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like, hey, man, I'm a bull. I don't do this shorting stuff. I'm waiting for my pitch. I've got a large cash position, and I want to swing the bat. Yesterday wasn't it. And you're like, what do you mean yesterday, wasn't it? It was mechanical. And Tim, well, how can you define mechanical? Uh, what Danny just said helps clear that picture up a little bit. But anytime, like normally when you get plus 800, plus 1,000, plus, there was at one point plus 1,300 ticks to the upside. And that, that is enough normally to staunch, to staunch any bleeding in the market. And well, get, that just tells you selling strong. Yeah. That's mechanical. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's the, moment, the moment that buying pressure released, I mean, uh, well, buying pressure eased up eased, a little bit it keeps going it, it just it's mechanical yeah. and, and so yesterday was mechanical and you can see what the dollar is doing here right now down half a percent and so i don't let's look at what stocks are doing stocks were soft um stocks are up look at that so look at this relationship and i i'm, I'm being honest with these stock nerds i i literally wasn't looking at the markets right before we went on the air but the dollar pressure i'm going to show you this one more time the dollar pressure eases up it's down now half a percent stocks are now positive and stocks are positive and 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 you're like tim it can't be that simple and i'm telling you when when we talk uh whether we're doing a show about it or we're just talking like how we are right now algorithms are running this this (laughs) it's the there's nobody at home going Okay, dollars that like they're, they're not in mass. Like I'm doing it right, and and I know probably a couple of you at home are doing it because you do the type of analysis that I do because you write to me. But it's just algorithms, and that's why it's mechanical. And you haven't had the whoosh, and so we're going to remain in this purgatory until we get to quantitative easing number five, which is uh, cinco in Spanish. What is that for the people who speak English? Oh, five. 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 Yeah. Quote, cinco. Five. five. Cinco. Okay. Okay. Yes. I think more people know Cinco because Cinco de Mayo. Mayo is May. Mm-hmm. If, you're from, uh, if you're from certain parts, of it, Cinco de Mayo, it's not mayonnaise. Not Cinco de Mayo. Not, it's, it's a thing down here in Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that. Taco, Cinco de Mayo, ta- for sure. Taco Tuesday. That's right. No, no. Please don't use that voice again. <laughs> I'd rather do your 
Kim, why don't you tell me about the market voice? Oh now. my gosh, wow. yes, my. Oh, yeah. that's pretty great. Red, too, red, red, redneck who hates me voice? Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. Alexa, oh, I Alexa love red, redneck that hates me. Love yeah. red, I love redneck who hates me voice. I was doing it with Zach earlier you today. Get to one the of these mark. days, we need to put together all of our characters we've developed over the years. You know, we, have, have, we haven't brought out a show. JJ yeah. Snuffington the third in a long time. That was a classic. Yeah, I, well, we have we stopped talking about. About, um, who was that based off of? Uh, what's his name? Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street? No, J.J. Yeah. Stephanie the Third was the guy on uh, Gerber. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally I forgotten about him. Like all all together. Show history for fans show right history there. right there. Yeah. So look, um, bring up a bring up a uh, uh, chart of his ETF. Oh, what is it? Oh, what? his ETF. Let's, the let's, open an ETF. Yeah, let's get it crushed. I didn't. <laughs> We we shouldn't sound so joyful. This is this is, well, <laughs> this is uh, the saying: better to keep your mouth shut and people think you're a fool than open it and what and prove it. Out. What what is this ticker? Is it Gerbs? <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. What did he say? G, uh, golf king, golf kangaroo, golf kilo. Yes. Gen Tech. He calls it Gen Tech. G e n t e k. No. Or GK. It, well, it's it's the Gerber he Kawasaki considers himself. I wonder if yeah, this is an old Kawasaki. label. Can, yeah, it's probably an old label. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is um, that's 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 uh, that ugly swiper. Nowhere to hide now because he picks the stocks for this. So. Oh really? Oh, this is active management. This is this is yes. uh, his this is his answer to ARKK. Correct. Let's take a look at that. Maybe he's just Ooh, buying so ARKK better. for the fun. For his- <laughs> Could you imagine? He's he's loading his ETF with ETFs. Sure. Oh, there's there's fun to yeah, funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen no, that new? Have you seen that new stack? Accounts with his own ETF. Mm. That's you, double dealing, right? That, have you seen the the yeah. stagflation ETF that they just came out? They just came out with, and it's like fifty five to eighty five percent tips, Treasury inflation. Yeah. But they're using the Schwab. Tips ETF for that, so they're buying a fund. They're um, buying an ETF for that portion. Problem is, tips are down eight percent year to date, so it's not helping. Let's go much. back to this for a second. Uh, I just said the words double dealing, uh, you know, and Don goes, "Yeah, and uh, what double dealing?" Don, explain it, please. He manages money, but he's also the biggest holder of his own ETF in the in those accounts. Well, but that's that's not uh, that you can do that so that you can help seed the fund. Like a lot of times, it's it's sort of like prime. So the you pump can collect volume. you can collect management fees and collect fees on what you're putting uh, your clients into. You can collect. That's the he's, double deal. He's saying he, there's a management fee with uh, the ETF, right? And then there's a management fee by being with Gerber. Oh, double so dip. if you're charging, yeah, yeah well, that yeah. that would pose a problem. Right, and like if he was giving because the, there's conflicts of interest. But if he was giving the ETF uh, without needs, fee, he needs lots of disclosure. No, no, no. He you can't do that, right? You can't charge. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. But if you have a, whoa, a, whoa, if he's you, a broker, you, you don't know the answer to something. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Oh my that's god, kind of tricky. Yeah. Zach, I'm staying <laughs> this. <laughs> yes. Hey, seriously. write this on the di- diary. Today is yep. May si- on May six. Dan didn't know something. That's right. Whoa, ten thirty one Central. <laughs> 23 That's minutes into the show. Can yeah. we call AK? <laughs> <laughs> she's been she's been waiting for this one moment. I'll get her to watch it. It's I'll get her to watch it where I yeah. the story. No, no, but but if you if you're a broker, so yeah. you can work on commissions, there's conflicts of interest. Mm. If it's adequately disclosed, I don't know the answer to that. But that does seem like, you know, taking putting somebody in annuity, getting a distribution and taking the distribution from the annuity and put them in a loaded mutual fund. I mean, it seems like a little bit of extra layers. Yeah, but and I don't know. I have you know, to. that's that's for somebody else. Yeah. But it but it, it does seem um, it might not be illegal, but it does seem not kosher. And he may not be. He may be just doing his own clients, you know, kind of the same way as a fund, but doing that fund so that yeah. people outside the firm can start putting money. in. So d- last last time Bloomberg posted the holdings, he was by far the majority holder of his own ETF. That's interesting. Well, so his net worth is going down pretty good. Is Kathy Wood? Well, let me ask you this, Don. I, I may, is Kathy Wood the biggest institutional holder of her own? But well, she's not. Well, you know, she it's, it's, it's different. Money. Yeah, it's different. I'm sorry. Completely yeah. different. 
I mean, that would be, you know, like we right, like right. We're, we invest on, right alongside our clients. Like uh, Kathy Wood is, it would be the biggest shareholder. Right, but we have all team. segregated accounts. Yeah, no, I, I know. Yeah, different, completely different. Um, got some, uh, so anyway, markets, so listen, uh, markets move because they have to, not because they want to. Uh, the dollar uh, triggering this and um, bonds have a lot to do. We're going to get into it as the show unfolds for everybody here, stock news, market lovers. But listen, uh, I love you. Uh, I get, I've gotten uh, a number of questions that have come in over the transom uh, this week. And the transom being uh, Twitter in uh, my direct messages. And I, I appreciate it. And so uh, you can get them at TJ Razor. Just uh, shoot me a message. I've had two uh, that, that uh, we'll address on the show, okay? Uh, one is for Don. Uh, it's Don Stat, um, where uh, two hundred day. Like, what is the stat Don uh, talks about when stocks go under the two hundred day? Like, how far do they typically fall? The evolution of that study, Don. Can you talk about your research uh, around the two hundred day, please? Yeah. The um, let me see if I can easily find. I, I know that under the. Under the 200 day in the, well, 12 bear markets that we've had since 1970, the average loss is 33.5%. And typically from high until you hit the 200 day is 11.3%. So that means if you just pull the plug at the 200 day, uh, you're going to lose on average 11.3%. If you ride them all out, you're going to lose an average of 33.5%. Not all break of the 200 day turns into a bear market, but there's no bear market that happens without uh, a weekly close below the 200 day moving average. Kind of like not all follow through days lead to a rally, but there's never been a rally without a follow through day. So you're avoiding on average 23% more downside if you pull the plug at the 200 day moving average. That's the big takeaway. Um, And there's been so much destruction. Hunter, how many stocks? I think it's uh, close to 50, 40 or 50%. Hunter, if you could, I don't know if you know this off the top, but how many stocks in the NASDAQ have retraced 50% of their moves? I, uh, I, it's, it's higher than, I would say it's, it, it was like uh, almost half back in like February, March. So I would say it's probably higher than that now. It's, it's more it, than likely. This is, if I'll, I'll, I'm going to vamp here a little bit, Hunter, if you can find some of that. Um, I'm sure to. There, uh, there has been so so much destruction. It's it's like we're living through a two thousand two thousand one. I I don't did our did my our sound still going through Zach? Yeah yeah so yeah. so one what, okay. what, what so I, I I don't want that to gloss over skip over sure what so right now the Nasdaq is actually in a bear market. It's down more right. yeah. than twenty percent. But what Tim's saying is that ha- over half of the stocks within the NASDAQ are down over 50%. So if you're owning individual stocks and you're not, you don't have some rule sell rules there, you could be getting, you could be yeah, having like a COVID market or 2008. There, there's, um, and now uh, if you follow this stuff, and I, and I do, I follow a bunch of things I find interesting on finance. There's in tech world, there is a, a lot of layoffs coming. They're, 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 they're happening they're right started, now. They're starting, yes. And, and not like Facebook just went on a hiring freeze uh, till 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but, in v, but in private tech, you know, like private companies that are, mm-hmm. are funded, they're, they're, if they're not just shutting down, they're, they're laying off. And it's, it's, it's feeling, feeling's a tough word here, but it's feeling dire. And when you say half the, half the market, in the NASDAQ um, has corrected maybe 50% or more. And yet we, we still don't, feel, I still don't sense that we've had this whoosh moment for, for, the, for the economy, like where people understand that we're going through this 08 moment, this 2000, 2001 moment, because 08 was like you had these fireworks happening, right? Like it built up, it built up, it built up, but then you had these firework the fireworks happening towards the September and the fall of 08. This, this feels like, oh, I don't, I don't think the media, the financial media is covering it like they were. You know, remember, Kramer just said a couple months ago when we had a little bit of a pullback, he said, this is a time we're about to hit, enter a huge market uptrend, load up the truck and buy. He literally top-ticked the market. He did? Yeah, he okay. said it like a month and a half. And as soon as he said that, 
<laughs> the market sold off since. Probably a good time to insert that Danny Kramer background, Zach. That you, the Kramer background. Do you have that? Uh, maybe. Yeah, pull it up if you can, and we'll uh, we'll put Danny's face yeah, on. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah. Um, but all I'm saying is, before during the tech wreck when it started to break, the media was out there talking about how risky it was and warning people. Yeah. During 2008, they were out there warning for whatever reason. They took a much more bearish oh, stance I, I haven't, than, than yeah, now. Where, where, where's, and, and you and I and Don and, and Hunter, we watch this oh, every there he is. We watch this every day. I mean, we follow this every day and follow the economic data. Right. So we're seeing that. They're not mentioning things like you you know, like you mentioned the tech layoffs. Yeah. You gotta kinda dig a little bit to you find do. all that. You do have to dig a little bit. And and uh the list is starting to grow. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. And um I yesterday I'll show you one thing that gives me um, a little pause here about, well, it was earlier, it was higher this morning. Book call ratio finally got over one. Dan Merrick. Can, can I, 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 want, on, just, I want boots on my shoulder, though. I want that monkey on my shoulder. Let's, on my let's go back to this. So oh, if, yeah. I, I think it's the subtlety of this design. There's a version of it in the background where his head swapped out of the Mad Monies and everything. Dan Money. Oh, yeah. I, uh, like, I, I want I this like whole thing on Dan, head, but put Dan's face in. Yes. Yeah. Like, I like the bumper sticker, Living the American Dream, and it's Danny's. United States of Dan Merrick. Yeah. Like, the, there's some subtlety here that I. If we, it, I, I, enhancements might be like some. I need uh, to get the full version. Of if you can get some like for next longhorns on there. So oh, okay. Yeah. yeah wow. Like, wow. Yeah. Or, or Yosemite Sam America mud flaps. According to Dan. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Maybe some mud flaps. It's a good, Tarnation. it's a good look. Horrible. <laughs> tarnations. Yeah. Oh, instead of booyah, get tarnations. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Like we have fun on this th show. Th we do, and I, I really believe for for the mental well being, uh, like it can't all be doom and gloom. Like there's a lot to complain about. There's a lot to tell you it's bad. You know, like this. But no, oh, but we're look staying positive. We're going to get a huge opportunity yeah. when the market finishes the bottoming process. Like I, we're going to get a huge. We're, opportunity. we're market realists, but I don't think. W w I think being downtrodden and uh, who's the gold bug? I don't particularly. Peter Schiff. Yeah, get Schiffered. I don't the the, the Schiffered sweeper. Uh, I don't think you need Schiff to based. Oh, oh. Wow. Schiff based. Close Schiff. Cl you see, it wasn't me, Zach. Zach goes, "Hey, don't swear during this because I got to go drive to X Y Z town." <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> uh, not me it was good yeah go and right so on. um really good don and so yeah i don't think you need to be all shiffered or there's a guy who wrote the reagan tax break breaks uh uh in the 80s and he always comes out and he's always doom and gloom and i don't think you need to be that way but we're market realists here and i th but i think uh having um your sensibilities about you is a big deal right, another well, question I, I do i do want to Tag on to one thing you said about, you know, you being wrong and how it was. How, you, you want know, to go back to me being wrong? No, 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 no. About that. No, well, I want to tie this in. Oh, right. With Tesla, you know, you said Tesla's to a thousand. Right, right. What can happen on that big up day? And things look like they were setting up. We actually took four positions and started oh. getting a little bit in about right. 20, 25 percent. Still had a ton of cash. And the next day, that's when the market went down. And Hunter did a great video titled, It's OK to be wrong. It's not OK to stay wrong. And we unwound those positions immediately that morning. The market was weak, but it really sold off toward the end of the day. Point, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, you know, figuring out you're wrong is only in hindsight. If the setup is there, we take it. If it changes, we get out. If right. that same setup happened again, we do the same thing again. I'm sorry, you said that. And then I started thinking, <laughs> the alternate title of Hunter's video was, it shouldn't hurt to go home. <laughs> Um, Hunter, did you find any stats on the NASDAQ? So not on the NASDAQ, but I think I've got something that may be just as much of interest here. So this is percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 above their 200 day. Okay. Uh -huh. And so over the course of the last year, we have gone from about 97% last April to 35% today. Um, and if you look back at the previous two corrections in COVID, we got to just like one or two uh, two percent of the S and P above the two hundred day, and then in the two thousand eighteen December crash, we got to about like fifteen to twelve percent 
So we're still well above those levels, but that's what makes it feel so painful is because over the last year, you went from having pretty much every stock in the S&P 500 above the 200 day to now only having a third mm -hmm. above the 200 day. So it's certainly we're approaching those levels that we haven't seen since 2018 and since 2020, but not quite there yet. This market, listen, I, let me show you this. Okay. Stock nerds. I, I was, uh, um, I want to put on SPX. Uh, I was, we were on the morning call. Um, I don't know if we were on the morning call Wednesday. Uh, it was Wednesday morning before the fed announcement. I'm going to put this on SPX. I'm going to put this on a weekly. And, um, you know, we had, we had the discussion, you know, if Jay Powell is a little dovish, the markets could rip higher. And I, you know, I said, I, I think Mark is, you know, not, not genius here. Just markets have a long way to fall and they still have a long way to fall. So if you, if you believe in Fib and Fibonacci, oh, did I lock my chart up? Oh, I'm going to be so mad if this is locked up. Nope. There we are. If you believe in Fibonacci uh, and some people don't, you know, the random patterns that markets create. And so um, the high last fall to the COVID low, a 50% retracement is all the way down here at 3,500. We're currently at 41.19. And I, I, Danny saw me teach this class a number of times. Markets typically will give back 50% of their moves. It doesn't matter what the market is. Like they're, 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 they don't go up in perpetuity. And sure. eventually the moves, they come back and they'll, they'll test a 50% retracement level. That's normal. 3,500. So that's you're like, well, Tim, that's only what six six hundred points away, so to speak. If you six hundred one S and P points equates to one Dow point. If you go six hundred points lower from here, <laughs> okay, the, the I I just can't imagine six hundred points. I, I mark the tape when we're taping this. I I I'm really curious what the tone and tenor of this country is. Six hundred points lower. Mm -hmm. That that's going to be more than a thousand points. Oh, way more lower yeah. than than the high, right? You're going to be at thirty five hundred, and you're thirteen hundred points lower. Like, it's a big move, a tremendous move. That means the market was inflated by that, you know, by by that much. Uh, and you're going to see um, you're going to see the demand the demand destruction that J Pal seeks. If you get to that 3,500 level, the only way, and this is the segues into a question that came over Twitter, okay? Okay. The only way Jay Powell can lower prices, because he has no, Jay Powell has no control over whether we pump more oil. The, the government can incentivize, but Jay Powell can't. He's not making law. Jay Powell cannot fix supply chain issues. Jay Powell can't reduce regulations to get more trucks into California, which we've talked about. Jay Powell can't do a bunch of things that might make common sense to you at home. Jay Powell can create demand destruction. And he does that by raising interest rates, which makes everything cost more. And I can't figure out if this is a, it dawned on me that this might have been a sarcastic question. Or a real question, and I, and I treat it as a real question. I think it's a real question. Okay. We had uh, a longtime listener of the show uh, email in, and his wife said, um, "I'm going to just read it verbatim here. Um, I want to make sure I don't misquote it. Um, here it is. Uh, my wife asked me how raising interest rates can reduce food prices. And and this is I, I believe this this isn't sarcasm. So yeah, I, I sure yeah. sure can you suggest how to answer. And I said, hey, we'll do it on the podcast. And my answer is that when you create enough demand destruction, when you create a lack of people having money, uh, the means to go buy things, like there's upper echelon foods, right? Like organic cost more than uh, something that is um, non or Or ribeye versus yeah, hamburger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. yeah like people are stepping down. When you create destruction, Maybe the cost, like brisket is really expensive. Brisket is tremendously, if you're in the barbecue community, brisket is tremendously expensive right now. All meats is expensive, but brisket, really expensive. When you create enough people going, you know what, man? I'm not making enough to afford this XYZ, in this case, brisket. I'm stepping down to hamburger. 
eventually the price of brisket will come down because there's more supply and there's not the demand. And so that's the phrase, demand destruction. You have to create demand destruction to get prices to fall. That's the only, it is the crudest weapon of all. Like Jay Powell, like if the, the Fed in there, they, these people, you know, they're not affected by inflation. Their salaries are guaranteed with a COLA increase every year. No, they eat for free at the Fed, shit. The, the, Danny's not joking. The Fed cafeteria. <laughs> they, got a guy, they got guys with tuxes and white, uh, white gloves serving them. It's, I'm not, I'm, I've eaten there. They need to go pay for hamburgers. Hunter, where's, where's the most, what's the most you paid for hamburgers recently? Uh, it'd still be five guys. Yeah. How much? They take the cake, yeah. How much? Uh, tw- I mean, it's $20 for a combo. Fries for- a drink and a hamburger. 20 bucks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Sorry. That ain't right, man. No, oh, it's so good, though. Five guys? Right. Are they use that peanut oh, yeah. oil? I don't, I don't eat the fries. But- Don, you need to bring the Ram fries Rick and come best. pull it up fries in my driveway. Best. I'll cook you a real burger. <laughs> will you have your Woo. will you have your uh guys with white gloves and black tuxes? Or- uh no, we yeah. won't. We won't. <laughs> we'll have jeans and a and a guayavera or a Floridian shirt. Guayavera? Well, that's a Mexican shirt if you didn't know that, Tim. Whoa. You didn't even know that, Tim. You're big you were speaking Spanish a while ago and you don't even know what a guayavera is. We are adding that to the arsenal. Man, man, go yeah, back no, to man. Pennsylvania. Oh, gosh. He's not a native <laughs> Texan like you, Dan. Taco Tuesday. Uh, Guayovera. Wow. You're like the Antonio Benedettis of our Guayovera shirts. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Demand. I'm still laughing at your pronunciation of cuatro. Cuatro. Roll those R's. Got to roll those R's. Oh, by the way, i um, been watching some Sesame Street lately, too. Oh my gosh, we're not taking another left turn, are we? No, this is a straight ahead shot. Okay. Uh, we're, going, we're going straight to no lefts or rights. We got to go to Hunter. Street. We, I, I know we got to go to Hunter. Hunter's got a wedding to go to. I know. Not a shotgun wedding, just a wedding. Um, not his, someone else's. Thank you. Yeah. Thank now, you. Let me clear all that up before there's speculation. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Stock turns and market was going, <laughs> yeah, is, right. is she pregnant? Shotgun wedding? <laughs> no. Um, Gordon. <laughs> Just Billy Idol's song went through my head. A nice day for a white <laughs> yeah, wedding? Yeah, yeah. Is that about a shotgun wedding? Oh, gosh, Tim. Just keep going. Anyway. Uh, Gordon from Sesame Street looks like Steve Harvey. From, uh, yes, found- he does. Yes, yes he does. right? Who's yes. Gordon on Sesame Street? Whoa. He's, the, he's one of the few he- actual humans. Okay, that's what I thought. He's one, of, he's one of the actual like, yeah. human yeah. characters walking around. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, and he does look like Steve Harvey. Right? Yeah. Like Steve Harvey shaves his head yeah, now. Yeah, He's yeah, on, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, demand destruction is the only way that you're going to see prices come down. It's the only way that a supply, it's the only way Jay Powell can claim victory with the supply chain catching up. How does the supply chain, Daniel, catch up in an overheated economy? Oh, that's right. Cause people not to be able to afford whatever's in that chain. <laughs> right. Oh, so then we have, and it comes down to supply and demand. And so if you want avocados to come down in price, keep charging 10 bucks for an avocado and then create destruction along the economy in certain areas. And when, no one, when, when they're all not selling. When, when enough people stop buying avocados, they'll drop the price to eight because yep. they got to sell them because they just rot. Yep. And that's what's going to happen. Certain par- this is great. Certain parts of the economy are going to rot. That's how you get food prices lower. Because the last thing to come down are wages. Yeah, and by the way, when you talk about food prices, you also got to remember a lot of people, food producers hedge their positions, food cost, with futures contracts. And sometimes they will take delivery because they're going to produce the wheat or the right. corn or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But a lot of people speculate. Well, when you raise interest rates, that increases the cost of a futures contract because the interest rate is tied, mm-hmm. uh, the inter- going interest rate is tied to the futures contract. So now futures become more expensive, volume goes down, and that also puts a little demand on, and all the, I mean, a damper yeah, yeah. on demand. All the farmers... I mean, there's less farmers per person. In, like, it used to be a lot of farmers to right, the population. Right, right. And now we're at one of the lowest points in history where 
uh, the amount of agriculture that's able to be produced by so few people is amazing, right? Yeah, where you got a lot of efficiency and you got corporate farming now. But a lot of that equipment isn't paid for. It's, it's, it's interest rate mm-hmm. sensitive. Mm-hmm. Finance. Finance, yeah. So um, everything costs more when rates go up. And... Well, the cost of financing goes up, right. which makes it a higher hurdle rate to be profitable, but it also hurts people's ability to afford things, so it kills demand. And someone might ask, what a button on this, and I'm gonna, I do want to go to Hunter. Um, when the market, considered to be a good, we haven't mentioned jobs report yet, considered to be a good jobs report this morning, whether it is or not, I, that's not the debate here. But the market just tanked after the jobs report, like just rolled over. And, and that's because uh, uh, anything positive for the economy is going to heat the economy through inflation, which makes j Powell's job even tougher. The only, uh, there was a productivity number yesterday on Thursday released that was a shockingly low, like, I, I, and forgive me that I don't know, I should have, I, I forget what's in the productivity number. I'm not, I'm not gonna fake, I just forget. Mm-hmm. So I forget what's in the productivity number. But it was like a minus 7%. It was bad. And I think it's amalgamation of way, different inputs. I mean, efficiency inputs. Yeah. That's a... This, these, these next... Uh, what are we in month five right now? Mm-hmm. The, these next six months. Um, my goodness. Where were, I have, I have a, my one last thing is where we might be uh, towards the end of the year. And I'll, I'll get to that here in a moment. But let's do this. Let's go to Hunter. And uh, I don't know what I, I want to know what you're looking at and what you're thinking. If you've got any more stats, you can break them out. Well, Tim, I was going to ask you, can you pull up that uh, chart that shows the ATR, like alongside oh, yeah. the S&P or the, mm-hmm. or the Qs, just showing whether it's expanding or contracting? Oh, yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's going to tell a pretty good story of the way the market has been behaving uh, over the last two to three weeks. And you can, it's just the S&P, the NASDAQ, they're trading like growth stocks over the last two or three weeks. And that's not necessarily a sign of market health. It's Meaning the volatility has gone way up, right? Vol- exactly. Okay. When you, the Q's were down over 6% at the lows yesterday. The S&P down almost 5%. That does not happen very often at all. Um, obviously, it has happened, but that's just something you don't see every day. And we've se- had more and more wild ranges, wild swings. Uh, over the last two or three weeks. And that's just not necessarily what you want to see if you're thinking things can start to resume upwards. It's, uh, you want to see some stabilization, some tightening of ranges. And that's just not what we're seeing. We're seeing the indexes trade like growth stocks. And so just to highlight this point real quick, Tim, will you pull up Datadog on like a five or 10 minute chart, 15 minute, doesn't matter, this, TDOG. This, this sounds like a stock that has taken a nosedive. Let, let's take a look. It's actually green today. Okay. But what I want to show you is look at this thing was at tagged the low of 102 today or something along those lines and is up went up to like 118 and it's done this this it's traded in this like almost 15 to 20 percent range like for the last three days. I mean, these stocks that were down 10, 11, 12 percent on Wednesday finished green just to be down 10, 11, 12 percent yesterday. So I'm just my point is, is this is a dangerous market. The volatility is vastly elevated. And you can look at pretty much any stock you want to. Apple was down 6 or 7% at the lows yesterday. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, so that's the point I want to make here is that there is there is some extremely elevated risk in the market. And it's chopping people up too. I mean, they, you look at Datadog or CrowdStrike, a lot of these names are just moving up and down in 10% swings in a very short period of time. So that's just something I wanted to highlight before I actually get into some charts that look halfway decent out there. And I think everybody can probably attest to this. It's slim, slim picking. So, uh, Tim, first thing we're going to look at here is defense stocks. And these are trying to get back above their key moving averages. You can pull up LMT, Lockheed Martin, first on a daily. Uh, And you can see this is, compared to the rest of the market, a pretty decent looking chart. It's currently trying to get back above the 21, trying to get back above the 50. It's real, real close to doing that. Probably a a move over 450. Uh, would pretty much do that here for Lockheed Martin. A couple of other names in this space that have a really similar look is uh, NOC, Northrop Grumman. I apologize. If I locked up my charts, um, hopefully oh, they're, they're not moving. Cool. 
Yeah, let's see. Uh, the purple, the purple shading is staying. I'm not. You know what? We're gonna go to ATR. Oh, I'm gonna come off the ATR charts, and we'll just go to this chart here, and hopefully, I don't lock it up. There you go. There and so you got basically the same setup on a, on pretty much these three that I'm gonna show you. So NOC, LMT, and then the last one is GD General Dynamics. Uh, and you could argue, okay, well, maybe these are some of the piano players. If the market really ends up coming in. It's likely that these will come in, and I would agree with that statement. But for the time being, they are bucking the trend in the market. They're trying to stabilize, trying to get back above key moving averages. So I just wanted to bring that to the viewers and the listeners. Three names you can look at that you can actually measure risk pretty effectively on that are coming up, trying to get above their moving averages as they've kind of compressed there. So defense stocks, also waste management stocks actually look halfway decent. Pull up WM. And it's kind of a similar look. I was look just, just about to there. say that. <laughs> <laughs> the similar look kind of to what you see with the uh, with the, the defense stocks trying to get back above the 21, trying to get back above the ADMA. But compared to the market, these are still relatively constructive charts. Uh, RSG is the other name that's in this space. That's the other big one that most people know, Republic Services. Uh, also basically the same looking chart that you see with WM. But this one actually a little bit closer to being above those key movement averages. So, and actually this is up 3% today on a day where the markets are, you know, the S&P is down 1% right now as I look, the Qs are down about 1.1. So these are some names that are bucking the trend. These are ultra defensive names, obviously, to Tim's point, like we were talking about earlier, uh, people aren't necessarily going to stop having their trash picked up. Businesses aren't going to stop having their dumpsters picked up and that type of thing. So these are the more defensive things that people can't necessarily do without, not so much like brisket or ribeyes. Um, and then last name here is A-R-C-H, Arch. Oh, this is, uh, is this uh, South American McDonald's? No? This is the coal name. Oh, no, <laughs> so, there's a, uh, I'm South th American McDonald's. Yeah, no, there's Ooh, a so Arch. No. <laughs> well, their burgers are like, no, um, there is a, I'm going to look it up. There. <laughs> This is South American. South American. I said, I'm going to go. Close enough. I mean, I guess if, if burgers are coal, you can make There's a ticker there. symbol that's very similar, but I will look it up. God. I did. But the, the point here is this, one, this is one of the commodity stocks that has held up pretty well. Obviously, you look at the chart. This is a nice looking chart, but that's not the point that I want to make. I want to point out that names like NUE, if you can pull that up, Tim. Hold on Newcore. one second. We'll stay with it's A R C O A R C O S. Arcos. Arcos. Arco Dorados. Yes. Yes. Keeping with the door theme. Not the same looking chart, by the way. <laughs> no, not even close. Your, your chart of coal is much better than Latin American McDonald's. Um, you said, uh, what, what ticker did you say? N U E. Uh, so the, the point I want to make is, is, Arch is, it looks very good. It's been very strong, but a lot of the commodity related stocks have been subject to some really nasty days recently. The new core was down like 10%, I want to say, uh, yesterday at the lows. Um, STLD is the other steel name in here. I mean, that's from 187 to 135 in a mm. pretty short period of time there. STLD is going to look very similar to what you see with new core. Um, and then lastly, URNM. So completely different space is uranium. Uh, but same type of, of pattern, just really kind of falling off the cliff the last three or four weeks. So my point is, is that you are in him. Uh, him. Yeah. It, just because Arch looks great right now doesn't mean that it's not subject to a possible huge decline uh, moving forward. I don't so, think I got it yet. Anyways. Hey, can, can you say the ticker symbol really slow? My dyslexia is kicking my butt. Yeah, yeah. You are in him. Oh, gosh. I, I had that completely bungled up. Thank you. So there you go from 94 to 69 in kind of that same time frame. So that's all I want to point out is, yeah, okay, yeah, Arch looks good, mm -hmm. but that does not mean that you can't get hit with a down 10, 15 percent, uh, you know, especially when it, it begins to get more and more narrowed uh, of what looks good and what looks strong. Your <clears throat> risk for potential large declines uh, begins to increase because there's more eyes on it, that type of thing. And Tim, so the last thing I want to do, I know I'm kind of taking up a lot of time here. Nope, you're fine. But I want to focus on this. Uh, can you pull up AAPL for me, please? And I'm about this in the last couple of videos, uh, but I really want to focus on this point. Um, and obviously yesterday, Apple down pretty big, comes back below the 200 day. 
today it tried to to get up kind of right up into that 200 day and kind of has pulled back off of that but the point i want to make is apple for the last week and a half is starting to live below the 200 day and that is something that apple has not done since covid of 2020 and that is important because since covid of 2020 apple has been the bellwether pretty much every other stock out there has gone below the 200 been below it for a little bit at least at some point in time in the last 2 years but apple has not so I just, it's the biggest stock in the market and it's doing something it hasn't done in two years. And I think it's worth taking notice of. It's also tried to break out past that 182 level three times and failed. Uh, so I just want to point that out, that this is a change in character for Apple. Previously, if it's gone below the 200 day, it's just snap your fingers, it's right back above it, uptrend resume type of thing. But not so much the case over the course of the last week and a half or two. And I think that's extremely imperative to pay attention to especially with the current state of the market and where the market is currently trading. Uh, this, I, in my opinion, this sets up Apple to possibly break those recent lows. Uh, I mean, it's the moving averages are beginning to angle down towards uh, the 200 day. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's a big change in character on the biggest stock in the market. So I think it's really important. But that's all I got today, Tim. That's Hunter, all. Hunter, you were talking about the increase in volatility. And right now, the volatility futures are actually inverted. Not by much, but just a little bit. Uh, no, they're inverted by here. Yeah, I got yeah, them up here. Yeah, they're yeah. inverted. But um, anyway, so that just means risk is high right now. So mm -hmm. definitely, if you're going to take positions, you definitely got to keep a short leech. The um, I, while he's talking about Apple, my thought was, you know, Apple, uh, the great manipulator of the economy, because you know the way our economy is built, that the stock market's healthy, you, you the wealth effect of feeling yeah, like you have money. Um, Apple can go in there. I don't know if they have enough purchasing power, but their buyback is huge. Hunter, do you know the buyback of Apple? I'll vamp for a second. The buyback oh, no, is off huge. my head. The buyback is huge with Apple, and if Apple gets as they deem, because they they can they they're not on a program. They buy it when they deem it cheap enough. They when when the company yeah, but believes, you got a pre you got a pre, you got a pre file for that. No, they they've, they've yeah, got the yeah, hugest yeah. buyback on the market. Yeah, and already and so. But they don't have to deploy it. It's not on a And suit. the regulators will definitely play ball with them on that. They'll be pretty loose with them mm -hmm. because they want them. Yeah. Because if Apple goes, so goes the market. Yeah. And they want Apple to remain strong to help the if market. If they out. deem the market, if they deem their stock price undervalued, they will step in there and buy enough of it to, like, the hand of God coming in. But really, it's buyback. And there was a, I, I didn't bring it um, for the like last month, but it, now, as buybacks increase, is this the sign of a market top? Was an article I was uh, researching, and yeah, but it doesn't mean it's going to ca capitulate uh, all the hell in a handbasket. Don, a lot of moves this week, a lot of moving parts. What are you looking at, and uh, what can folks expect? Let me show them where to find Don's video. So, if you go to revereasset.com, a couple things here. Um, you go to tomorrow's insight, Don's video. You will be right here if you click the tomorrow's insight. Click the podcast tab. Uh, what you'll get is every one of our podcasts in all of Zach's masterful artwork. Leon, almost like Leonardo da Vinci, yeah. or, <laughs> as, or as described on the show, or right Leonardo the Turtle. Oh wow, yeah. I'm not gonna let that one down. And so, um, what, that that was last week. What was? Uh, no, that was the week before. What is this one? What what episode is this? Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Wow. Oh, they had Boris Becker. That's Boris right. Becker. Yes. Prison. Or going to prison. Anyway, you'll find Don's videos uh, not on the podcast. You'll find the podcast. If you want to watch it if you're listening at home. But tomorrow's insight. Video will go. Don, what are you talking about tonight? And what are your thoughts? One, th one thing I want to point out about Apple from a relative strength standpoint, it's been in line with the S&P all year, but it's been badly trailing the NASDAQ 100. So uh, Apple is very clearly not a panacea or, or uh, you know, a, an oasis in the desert. And Hunter's point about the 200-day moving average is very true. Just watch that 160 level. I want to talk about the only thing that we are invested in right now, which is VTIP, Vanguard uh, Short-Term Treasury, uh, Treasury uh, Inflation Protected ETF. Uh, last week, Hunter and I went on went on independent fishing expeditions to try to determine, okay, if the, we're going to be holding a lot of cash for a long time, let's take a look at 
uh, where the best place to get a safe yield is. And by a safe yield, we don't want something that's going to yield 8%, but drop 16% in price. And we, we narrowed it down to only two tickers that have both, uh, that, that are down year to date less than their yield. And by far the most liquid one was VTIP, down a little bit more than 1% on the year, but yielding at this point 5.5%. So that's where we're parking money uh, for right now to get some sort of a yield uh, versus the, the cash that we have uh, in our accounts. Uh, we held a, a commodity ETF, took a small profit on that, but those have been volatile. Uh, lately as well. We kind of do if the market stays uh, the way it is, the setup is there for commodities to continue to, to outperform stocks, but that uh, that um, could break at, at any minute. And really, if you looked at Hunter's video on Monday, he went over how devastated real estate staples and utilities got on Monday. And if you think there's a safe place to hide mentioned the piano player and that's absolutely what it is when they raid the house of ill repute they arrest the piano player too and they're going to get uh they're going to get the the value stocks too they might hold up a little bit better but if you mm -hmm. buy something thinking that your money's safe and you two days later you wake up and uh you lost six seven eight nine ten percent on these things that's what happened friday and monday uh to those quote-unquote value stocks so uh, better to just leave it parked in cash, take a few. Um, we just take some tactical. We had a, took a tactical short yesterday, uh, took small profits in that today when we got a little bit too extended to the downside. Uh, look to reload that at a less, um, at a, at a less risky as we rally, if we rally up into, uh, resistance on the major indexes. But, uh, no reason to be a hero again and to echo last night's video it's okay to be wrong it's not okay to stay wrong we took a shot with the, some things that were working with the rally wednesday that was all undone thursday and all of our stops were hit on these uh as the market plunged on thursday we ended up losing zero point uh two less than zero point two percent of uh overall uh assets uh your assets under management or what your account balance is. So we look for these low risk entries. The market will bottom at some point. It'll bottom when the news is the worst. Um, so we're not going to get so locked into uh, saying, oh, no, we have to go lower. We have to go lower. And, and there's a, there's a, it's possible that you can get into that mindset, but we're always keeping an open mind, always keeping our watch list. Uh, fresh and speaking of watch list, I last Friday's video I did a thirty survivors uh, over the weekend. I dug a, a, quite a bit more of the list throughout the week and over last weekend. I actually got up to sixty four stocks. I'm going to chop that down to just ones that are still above their twenty one uh, for this week's uh, twenty one video. For this week's big show video. So uh, tune in to there to see what's surviving. A lot of things that held up just fine last week got absolutely demolished this week. Bring up a chart of uh, CrowdStrike, CRWD. So you can see CrowdStrike was holding up fine last week, and look what it did this week. Just uh, forget it. So I was looking for things that held that broke the 21 but held the 50. That was the, uh, the thought on the survivors list. but. Uh, PANW, another one that's a, a quote unquote uh, uh, blue chip cyber stock, blue chip uh, you know tech stock. It is in cybersecurity, but these just got demolished this week. So um, some things are surviving, but they're in the list. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to buy them. The only thing that we're holding, as I said right now, is VTIP to okay. get some sort of a yield on our parts cash. And that's it. Right. So, so I want to clarify one thing Don said. So on that big rally day, like I said, we took four positions, but because Don knew that the risk was high and that, the, you know, risk were elevated. And so we kept a much tighter leash. And as soon as the market started turning over in the morning, the next day, we unloaded all four of those positions and the aggregate effect on the total portfolio was a negative. What was it? Point 
0.2%. Zero, zero 0.2%. Yeah, yeah. It's actually so you, less be, than that now so, with with the, the small profits we took on the short and how VTIP is up today. Right. So it's we're so, approaching break even. So it's not just, so number one, you've got to tighten your leash when the risks are much higher. You may give positions a little bit bigger leash, a little bit more room to breathe, if you will, in a good pro, uptrending market. And you'll also take bigger position sizes. So you have to adjust your position size as well. And then it's also, so it's, and so it's individual positions you've got to adjust. Then it's also how the individual positions affect the overall portfolio construction. So both of those variables are real important. Okay. So Danny, we're at the part of the show where I need, I have one last thing. Okay. My one last thing is going to be how QE5 evolves. Wow. And what it's going to, what it's probably going to look like. But I need you to do the short outro, like the short tell them how to find us. And if you want Don to do it, he can do it. But you're I here. I would be happy to do it. Are you happy to do it? Okay. I'm happy to do it. Folks, listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Just send them to revereasset.com, and they can hit the subscribe button in the top right. We won't spam them. We won't reach out to them in any way. It's up to them to reach out to us. For, ask for us for a, port, a complimentary portfolio review, or if they have questions or comments about a stock, or they just, just want to have a topic they would like us to discuss on this podcast. You'll also get our daily market insight uh, short video every day uh, after the market close that the market is open. So it keeps you kind of in tune with what we're thinking and what we're doing. And it's very easy. You can reach out to any of us at dan at revereasset.com, don, tim, or hunter at revereasset.com. And you can always, always, always call us old school at 855-REAL-WEALTH. Okay. So, um, and we've talked about this. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I can't remember if it's a phone call we've been talking about this on our morning call or uh, on the show. Um, but we've, uh, with the, the loan, the college loan burden that's out there, like uh, the, the current administration is talking about relieving some of that debt. Now it's it, it, shifting. Yeah. Sh okay. okay. So <laughs> there, it's really interesting though. It, this college loan problem only affects about 5% of the economy, which is we, we could, we could have this talk yeah, about yeah. like, like, so it's, it, but it ties into inflation. Mm -hmm. So if you think about what, like a lot of people are it, correctly saying that, well, because Jay Powell went in there and stimulated the economy so much and didn't back off earlier, all that government induced money printing mm -hmm. is why things are so inflated and, and once the velocity money started turning mm -hmm. over, that's correct. So why does college cost so much, Danny? Because in the late sixties, to get college to be more affordable, I'm, I'm not debating the validity of this program. I'm just explaining some facts here. You introduce government backed loans. Well, in 1978, the Department of Education was formed and they started guaranteeing student loans. So yeah, right. you could get guaranteed loans, so the colleges ran right. to loan you money. But then the price of college went up. That's, and it, the, that's inflation. Just yeah. don't, I didn't don't go on a diatribe. So you've got free money, right? That free money isn't free. Eventually, it's also inflationary. Yes, it costs you, and so you've got this big problem. But it, when it when it's said to be a big problem, it you're gonna. Only 5% of the economy is affected by the burden of uh, not being able to afford to pay their college loan. Okay? Now, if you want to debate, not, not debate, but outline this a little bit more next week, we absolutely can. But even if they do, 10%. See, he, Biden can do this by executive order. Okay? Doesn't need congressional approval. Even if they do by executive order, the $10,000. That they're like, we're not going to wipe out all college debt. We're just going to take off a $10,000 shaving mm -hmm. from whatever you owe. Mm -hmm. Danny, that number comes out to, it's going to stimulate the economy by half a trillion dollars. Not all at once, but yes. No, all at, uh, that. Uh, well, it's the payments that you, oh, you're saying because. The they're going to wipe out ten, off the top of everybody's loans, $10,000. Because it's like forty three trillion that's out there, and, sure, and, sure, and and, and, uh, and so they reduces their payments. See, I got to see how they're going to do it, how they're going to make. Payments. Well, nobody's been making any payments for two years. They've yeah. all been deferred, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So if you if you give people, well, right, if you give people the ability to spend more, 
that's going to go right back in. But, but what Don's gonna, saying is yeah. they haven't been spent. They haven't been paying anyway. Yeah. So now yeah. they're just going to have to pay less when but, they have to start. But that's paying. coming to an end. Like they're going to have to start making payments again right. soon. Right. And, and they're going to reduce that payment by ten thousand dollars, which is reducing that payment. The point here is reducing that payment by ten thousand dollars is the equivalent of putting half a trillion dollars of stimulus into the economy without having to go through Congress. That's QE5. Okay. <laughs> it's not all at once, though. That's what I'm saying. Hey, how do, what's the schedule on that? Payments, but you're right. You're right. They're, they're looking for anything. Hey, to your point, though, stimulus yeah. wasn't all at once. Right. It was monthly. Yeah. My, the, quanti- uh, the quantitative easing that took well, the place. The child care credit. All yeah, the all, all was monthly. Yeah. So that the stimulative effect at the midterm elections, but but if, if someone out there cynically, uh, maybe maybe correctly saying, isn't that just buying votes? Well, that yes. we could yeah. we could talk about that. <laughs> They're called politicians. Oh, They're it, called politicians for a reason. We, we could talk about my, that. My my prediction. I'm going to predict. It yeah. doesn't matter because that's not how we manage money. We manage money by measuring what is happening while it's happening. I think Powell will start changing his tone and becoming much more dovish by October. Well, because of the slowdown. Maybe, Maybe, but the stimulative effect of putting half a trillion dollars in, you feel it's the wealth. I I get it. it. And that's why it's going to be hard for them to kill inflation like they did in the late 70s, early 80s. Because while they were raising rates, they were still throwing money out of airplanes. Congress and the White House were still stimulating when the Fed was trying to slow the economy down. And they're not all on the same page. Finally, Volcker came in there and said, I'm going to raise rates so yeah. high. It doesn't matter what Congress does. Right. And that's, you know. You mean kind of like how uh, we're trying to uh, fight a war with Putin, by, but, we're, but we're all still buying Russian energy? <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Kind, of, kind of a similar situation, yeah. there, right? Doesn't, oh, does, doesn't work. Yeah, yeah right. No, that's there. right. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Anyway, folks, listen, have a safe and good weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. On your money. Barring any extrogenous event. <laughs> My goodness, that is great. That last shot was.